my name is Tomislav Glubik. I am the Senior Technical Specialist for Autodesk Australia and New Zealand. Uh, my main role is for plant and infrastructure. So uh, what we're going to do today is have a quick look at uh, PNID to start off with on any plant project um, and just give a, a quick overview on, on doing a PNID and some lines and extracting some data. Uh, then we're going to jump into our piping, our, our 3D modelling side of a plant, uh, do a couple pipes, uh, show you how to do some equipment and then start doing some structure. Um, so the the, the, the premise of, of today's webinar is to show how we can use advanced steel, being a new product that we bought a couple years ago now from Greytech, um, how the plant users can conceptually or, or sort of pencil in their design of a steel structure inside plant 3D, then we're going to extract that information, send it over to advanced steel and then bring that model back into plant uh, for us to create orthos and, and drawings off. Um, so this is basically looking at the, the overall life of a project from a PNID um, to the 3D modelling on the pipe side. So we're going to do some, some isometrics as well um, and then just have a quick look also at advanced steel, uh, create some documentation, single part drawings, assembly drawings um, and getting some bill of materials out of that as well. So um, we've got an hour to do that today. We should be done in probably about 45, 50 minutes um, which allows us to have a bit of a Q&A session at the end as well. So before I kick off, uh, a little bit of my background. I've been at Autodesk almost five years now. My background was, was primarily uh, in plant and piping, but I also have dabbled in, in civil, structural, uh, electrical. I've done work with the RAF. I've done work with Boeing uh, on some of the submarines uh, that were produced, uh, created here in, Brisbane, um, in Australia. Um, and then, like I said, about five years ago, I joined Autodesk as the, as the plant specialist. Uh, and since then I've taken on infrastructure as well as uh, advanced steel. Uh, so just a quick rundown of, of today's agenda. Like I said, we're going to look at PNID, go through some of the 3D um, functionality uh, and even with 2016 with a new extension that just came out for people on subscription, uh, there's some functionality in regards to make, creating equipment uh, and, and the trim, so doing things like platform, uh, and, and saddles and supports and that sort of stuff uh, coming off equipment um, and even a new one called PCF to 3D so we can bring in a PCF so a PCF is a piping component file um, all of the other the plant packages not only ours but our, our competitors create PCFs uh, to create the ISOs so we can convert basically a, a text file um, of, of, a, of a PCF um, and then bring that in and convert it to 3D. So if, if uh, our catalogs and specs are also aligned, then it'll be a seamless exercise to go from one package to another. Uh, and then flowing through that, we'll create some documentation, do some reports in plant, and then again, the same thing we'll do with advanced steel. So import from plant, import to plant, uh, and then create some documentation. Okay, so kicking off with the demo, I'm just gonna jump into my Plant 3D software. Um, if anyone wasn't aware, obviously Plant 3D does sit on AutoCAD. It sits on every latest release of AutoCAD, so every sort of March, April, whenever our new releases come out, uh, obviously the new update for PNID and for Plant comes out. Uh, just to show you quickly on creating a new project, um, we give it a name and we can also create this project inside Vault. So Vault is our document management tool. Um, it sits on its own server. If you do create a Vault project, you do need to create a SQL server project at the same time. If you are copying settings from existing projects, um, so we have that, that button there to turn that on. So you might have a corporate standard for a project. Uh, so then that way you don't need to recreate your, your settings, your ISOs, uh, your symbology, all that kind of stuff. Um, we do have obviously have different settings, uh, imperial or metric, and we can do um, reporting of the nominal domain is in millimetres or even in mixed metrics. So if you want to mix up your, your uh, imperial and metric together, we do have that functionality. There are four settings for the PNID standards, so PIP, ISO, DIN and JOS. Um, 
you would basically base your corporate standards on one of these and then go through into the back end and then obviously change the symbology to suit. So even though our valves might be drawn in white, you might want them in yellow, green or blue uh, and obviously have have uh, whatever text you, you want or need. Uh, just a couple of directories obviously for, for some of the paths for the, where the models and the spec sheets live. Um, I'm of, of usually of the opinion the specs don't necessarily need to always live under the project. You're probably better off putting them under a common folder for that client. Uh, so then that way you obviously don't have to recreate them. And again, like I said, if you were to do a vault project, you'd need to do it as SQL Server. Otherwise, if you're doing it on a normal Windows server, you can use SQLite and or SQL Server as well. Um, so SQLite is just basically a file driven. Um, just to show you quickly what it looks like. So if I just jump into my project here, um, so you can see there that we've got the DCF files uh, for our databases for our plant project. So they're, they're just basically uh, SQLite files. So once it's all created, uh, plant 3 will go through, create the directory structure and you'll end up with what you see on the left hand side here through the project manager. The pin ID, the plant 3D and the related files folder are all hard coded. You can't do anything or change with, change them. But underneath there, I can create new drawings or even new folders uh, and even copy drawings to projects as well. So if you are using a pin ID from someone else, you can copy that pin ID or plant 3D model out of their old project in, into, the, into this, this new one. Um, data manager is just that. It just looks at the data within the, the, the file as well. So I can uh, click on the data manager button and it brings up the palette. So if I expand that, at any point I can generate a report on everything. So if I want to see all the gate valves on this pin ID, on this current drawing data, you can see there we've got 21 uh, gate valves there as well. Um, and then like I said, with the plant 3D side of it, we can create new folders. So uh, I've, I've separated mine down into disciplines. So you can see I've got the building equipment, inventor models, MEP models, piping and structure. Uh, the reason I've got MEP in there with the new 2016 suites, uh, we got rid of ASD and now we have AutoCAD MEP, so we can do uh, cable trays and ductwork and that sort of stuff. Um, have it included in our, our plant project, but it is uh, created all through AutoCAD MEP, which is in the suite. If you don't have the suite, um, then you, you know you basically can't do square piping. Um, there are a couple catalogs that you can get, can get from the exchange website um, to, to give you square piping. Um, but in all honesty, you might be better off just getting the, the suite with MEP and then you can create your own um, uh, square or, or rectangular you know piping or cable tray if you want to call it through there as well. Um, so just to kick off our PNID project quickly, um, this is just one of the out of the my, my demo set PNIDs. Uh, everything is driven through a workspace. So all I need to do is just switch workspaces and I will get the new palettes. I don't need to jump in and out of the software to go from a, a 2D to a 3D sense. So if I want to draw a line from this exchanger to this tank, I just cl click on the primary line segment lines and then I draw my lines coming across and over. So you can see there it's automatically done the flow arrows, automatically broken the lines. Um, if I've drawn it the wrong way, I don't need to erase it. I can just right click, edit the line and then even reverse the flow. So now we're going from the tank to that exchanger and all of that data and information is represented uh, inside our data manager as well. So I always say to people that the pin ID is the Bible for the project. The more you do in the pin ID, the less you do in the model. So if I wanted to assign a tag for this, so I can call it a six inch line. Uh, in the spec, I'll pull it in as a carbon steel 150 pound rated spec. Um, what can we call it? Let's call it uh, glycol return, for example, and I'll give it a, a double nine, double nine number. So that's the out of the box tag. Again, you can customize and, and set all that up. You can have six fields. You can concatenate them with or without the hyphens, whatever you want to put inside there. Um, and I can also place the tag on the line. Okay, so now that line is called up as a six inch line. If I put a valve on it, it's going to do two things. The first one it's going to tell me is that I need to make it a unique tag. Okay, so some tags in here have to be unique. You know, you, you don't have to have them unique yourself. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll put in a number that I know doesn't exist. 
and then I'll, I'll assign it. So it's told me that I have a, a same tag in there, so I've made that tag unique, and also it's inherited the pipeline size. Okay, so if I change the pipeline, then the valve will change. And again, all of this is represented all inside our data manager now. So you can see now we have 22 gate valves, whereas before I had 21. And if I scroll down, if I look at my primary line segments, that 9999 num number is listed and it's going to the tank from the exchanger, okay? So at any point I can extract this data, I can export it all out to Excel and then I can re-import that data as well. Okay, so that's in, in a quick nutshell what we do with the pin ID. Um, obviously on off page connectors are connected, so at any point I can click on an off, on off page connector or an OPC and I can view the connected uh, arrow or I can even open the connected drawing. Um, all of our info tags on here as well, so I can go through if I need to change any information on this pump. So if you look at the properties of that, I'll just dock that off to the side here. So you can see that the manufacturer is ordered as pumps. So if I turn around and I say that we're now buying that from Warman. So you can see that the properties change, then my text changes as well. And obviously that will uh, flow through to any data manager reports or even the, the, the um, report creator that comes with, with Plant 3D. Okay, so once we've done a pin ID, we basically want to start looking at uh, doing the 3D modeling side of it. But before any, I guess, plant project needs to start, we need to build catalogs and specs. So with the catalog and spec editor, you might sort of uh, do these while the pin ID is being done. The pin ID doesn't have to have a spec uh, for it to work. The, the spec field inside the pin ID is just a, a, a piece of text if you want to put it in its most basic form. Um, but you obviously want to know that we're going to have six inch valves or eight inch valves or we're going to have certain reducers, certain um, sockets, welderlets, all that kind of information. So everything is driven from a catalog. So the catalogs that do come with the software, um, you know, we've got ASME, AWA, there's, uh, where are we? AME, so ductile iron, plastic, steel, um, and we can also use some Australian standard pipe and fittings. Um, but let's just look at the ASME one, for example. So the catalogs you can use uh, from the ones that we give you, or you can log on to the Autodex Exchange website and download catalogs for free as well. So. You go through the, the catalog um, will dictate you know things like end conditions, any schedules, any long descriptions, short descriptions, and the S keys, and as well as as the sizes. So for these pipe nipples, we've got uh, let's look at a 25 mil pipe nipple. Um, the matching pipe OD is 33.4, and we've obviously got some of the dimensions here as well. So maybe you know these these are hard coded at 25 mil. Maybe you want two inch, three inch, four inch nipples as well. You can go through and, and dictate those lengths. Uh, if we look at things like spec blinds, so if we look at a one, uh, let's look at a two inch spec blind. Whatever the matching pipe OD, the long description for that size, even the weight, uh, and then you can go through and obviously uh, adjust all the sizes of the suit. You've got to think of a catalogue as, as a library of parts. A spec is a filter of those parts. So if I go to my project uh, and let's pull up, um, let's pull up one of the stainless. So these are the out of the box specs. So out of the box, we've said our stainless steel 150 spec is half to 24 inch for blind fangers, 150 pound raised face. Okay, um, our, uh, our half to two inch um, are the small bore, and then for everything else, we're going three to 24 inches is butt weld. Okay, socket weld. Um, you know, we got socket weld flanges, weld neck flanges, we've got different types of gaskets, spiral wound, all the different socket, uh, socketlets, and then we've obviously got all the valves in there as well. So if I want to add or remove, I can click on one of the objects and click on remove from spec. Or if I want to add a new object, so if I do the same thing, if I filter out my catalog, 
to 150 pound uh, and then raise face uh, and then look at different valves. So if I want to add a different type of ball valve, then I've got four choices there. And then I can say whether I, I want to do uh, series B, series A, um, short pattern or, or long pattern valve. So once I select the ones I want, I can just click on add to spec and it will put it inside the spec. The next important part of building a spec for the, the, the 3D side of it is the branch table. So the branch table will dictate to the software what happens when we get to a, to a branch. So if I'm connecting a three inch to an eight inch, okay, so if I come across here, I've got a T2 and an S1. So if I look at my legend, a T2 is a T reduced, so we're reducing T with butt weld ends on it, or an S1, so we can do a stub in. Okay, so they're the two options. In Plant 3D, if you don't, populate the branch table. When you do create a branch, it'll just come up with, with an open end uh, connection. You see the little drip symbol um, and it won't connect. Okay, so it does need to have a branch table. So once the specs are done, we can jump into our piping model and start creating our piping. Okay. This is where you might have one person, you might have a person per discipline. So you can see here, I've got an equipment model. Okay, so there's my, my tanks, my exchanges and my pumps. And I've also got a plant structural model. Okay, so because they're all within Plant 3D, they're all AutoCAD based, we can have all of them basically XREF one another. So I'm going to attach my piping model with my equipment and it'll just be an overlay with a scale of one obviously and an insertion point of zero, zero. So there we have our, our piping model. If I want to attach my structural model, Okay, so now as a piper on this particular project, I can see uh, what the structural discipline is doing, what the mechanical discipline is doing, and subsequently they can XREF my models and see everything else that they're, they're going to be doing as well. So for me to jump into 3D now, I've opened my 3D model, but I've still got my, my 2D workspace. I can switch over to the, to the 3D side of it. My palettes change here, so now I'm on spec CS150. If I change to spec, uh, let's go to my stainless spec, for example, then my spec palette changes over here as well, okay? So whatever I do up here in this palette, my tool palette will, will adjust to suit. Now, I've got a few ways of, of routing pipe. So I'm just gonna run some pipe out here in the middle of nowhere to, just to show you. I can click and just use my mouse, orientate in any direction. So I'm running an eight inch line in carbon steel, 150 pound, okay? If I wanna put branches in, I can just come around here and then just put my branches in. I can also use uh, typed in command, so I can go 2000 in one direction, 3000 in the other, control right click to switch my plane and come up five meters. Okay, so they're between all the IP points. I can also do a 3D polyline. So if I'm tracing from another program maybe, maybe I've done it as an AutoCAD 2D, I can turn around and say line to pipe, and there it is there. Okay, now lastly is what I can do is convert my pen ID lines to 3D. So it, that line that I did before of 150 CS 150 GLR 9999, I can right click on it and go place item. And what's happened, I've got a dialog box somewhere. Something's happened. So I can place this line Of 
I've got an off-screen dialog box that's not letting me place it. So I'll place it manually. So I'm going to run it from the node of this nozzle to the node of that nozzle. So now it's come up with, down the bottom you can see there are five solutions. So I'll go N for next, N for next, N for next, N for next, A, for, A to accept. Okay, so I've got my mating flanges come in and we've got my, my bolts and gaskets. So if I switch over to 2D wireframe, depending on, on how your screen looks, the red line here is in an, a bolt indicator and you can see the gaskets placed in there. So if I switch to my front view, if I look side on, there's my uh, gasket in there and the bolt is, is drawn in, in the plane that we're facing as well. Okay. So we can also come through and place um, any valves. Okay, so I can even drag them off the pen ID or I can place them from here. So I'm going to say that they're a flanged gate valve. Okay, and then I'm going to orientate the operator back over to the platform. So if I look at it from the left, we can see here that the valve has been placed. The operator can reach the valve operator from the platform, he's not going to walk into it, he's not going to bump his head on it either. Okay. So the whole idea of this is obviously for us to, to generate some documentation and some isometrics. So if I go to my ISOs tab, I can click on create a production ISO and I can say give me that line number 9999 and run it as a final A2 and then go create. So what it, it's going to do is go away um, and generate the ISOs in the background. You'll get a notification balloon coming up and saying that the, the ISO has been finished and created and then we can click and, and view that ISO. So one of the other things I'll show you once the ISO is created there's a new function here that came out with extension one called place a reference dimension. But I'll show you what happens once, once our ISO is created and we're all fine. So the ISO has been created, it says it's okay. And there's our ISO. So we've got our full bill of material. So we've got 5.2 meters of six inch pipe. We have three elbows few weld neck flanges, different bolts, gaskets. Um, there's our cut piece list and we've also got the nine butt welds on that as well. Okay, so it tells us where it's connected, all the dimensions, uh, the coordinates uh, and what each item is. So F, F3 means it's a flange number three, bolts number five and gasket number six. So when they build this in the workshop, they go to flange number three, so they'll go out to their, their store and, and grab a weld neck flange. It was bolt number five, so it was a 20 by 102 mil long. And gasket number six. Okay, so that's our ISO. So one of the other features, like I said before, that came out with 2016, the extension one, you can only get it if you're a subscription customer, is a reference dimension. So I can stick a reference dimension on this line uh, let's switch to wireframe. So I can put a reference dimension on here and reference it back to my structure. Okay. So now I'm going to rerun that ISO. And when that ISO is finished, we'll have a reference dimension showing that it's connected to, um, you know, either a, a, a structure, it could be a wall, or it could be some other type of reference dimension where it's, um, you know, that, that uh, the installers need to, you know, measure back from, from something somewhere. Okay, so here's 
that reference dimensions. So it's 1375 and 134 mil back off the center of the column for that pipeline. Okay. So that's one of the new features. The other one I'll just touch base on quickly is, and I'll just grab myself a PCF file um, that I've received from, um, from another plant package. So I'm just going to create a new drawing. So I'm going to create a new piping drawing and I'm just going to call it PCF import. So this PCF file, and I'll show it up on screen, is just a whole bunch of text. Like I said, it's a PCF that contains uh, data from another package. Uh, and then what we're going to go through and do is convert that PCF file to a 3D model. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go to the Home tab. and if if you've got it installed, if the extension one is installed, you get this PCF to pipe command and it's going to ask me for that PCF. Now it tells me inside that spec it's unavailable. So all we need to do is, is map out the B spec and the 1C0031 spec to something else. So for this, for this exercise, I'm going to just assume that one CS150 and one of them is going to be CS300. If you were converting properly, you would obviously build up the specs to suit. So then I'm just going to go create piping. And it's going to do its thing in the background. Okay. So it's reading the PCF and then it's reading our spec and then coming through and importing it. So there you have a pipe run from another plant package into ours. Uh, you can see there we've got a couple disconnects there that might be just because maybe I'm not using um, uh, the, the right elbows for that size. Maybe it should be um, socket weld for that. But again, I, I haven't matched up the specs properly, but we have the, the, the lines run in there. And then from that, obviously, I can, I can create ISOs. I can do whatever I need to do as well. So again, if you're, uh, if you're coming from a, a different piping uh, piece of software and you want to bring in uh, old models or maybe you're working with someone who is using um, a different piece of plant software and you want to uh, relate to them you can bring in their PCF file convert it and then you know run to tie-in points run to battery limits do whatever you need to do and then again you know you don't have to convert dumb objects you can create intelligent objects from the PCF file itself so that's, that was one of the new features uh, that came out with extension one one of the other ones is with it, within equipment, um, I'm just going to create a new file, equipment, new features. And just to show you just quickly what happens uh, with adding, you know, things like trim uh, and extra things on, onto pieces of equipment. So I can create, uh, let's do a vertical vessel here with a spherical head, a cylinder, um, and I'm going to put another cylinder. So the main head, let's say it's going to be two meters in diameter. Now you can see the, the diameter of the cylinder is inherited from the, the shape of the head. We can go through and change that to, if we want to. Uh, the height's five meters. Um, and let's say that we're going to make the base uh, is going to be 2200 and it's going to be 600 mil high. And go create. Okay. So you can see there we've got a plain standard vessel. If I want to go back and add more things, so if I want to add a platform, so I can add a platform to that and I'll just click apply and you can see there it automatically adds the platform to it. Okay, we can go through and obviously adjust the sizes of that. So if I can just go back to the modify uh, and click through, I can say, uh, you know, platform left, platform right, whether it's got a cage or not. So I can say, you know, yes, cage, uh, no to the cage. Okay. So we've got all of those options there. Some of the other options that we've got for trim, we've got skirts, platforms, whoops, um, any lifting lugs, any body flanges, or even a stiffening ring as well. 
Okay, so you've got a, a few more options in regards to, to adding uh, equipment trim rather than having to bother about drawing these as, as separate entities as well. Okay, so it was just one of the other new features within um, uh, within the Plant 3D extension one. So the main focus of this is to show what happens with the, the structure. So within the structure here, within Plant 3D, it is purely um, kind of, if you want to call it conceptual, uh, we can draw grids, okay? So I can have different grid names, different axes, values, uh, what their rows, platforms, and all of that sort of stuff is as well. Um, I can do, so if I just wanted to do basic member, uh, I can pull down the Australian standards for the structure off our exchange website. So if I wanted to type in a UB, uh, 360 UB, place at top of steel, and then just go through and just start placing, okay? So from a piper standpoint, we just want to know where the, the steel is, where the top of steel is, where there's a platform that we want to place. Um, you can see here I can do handrails as well. If I go through and edit it, I can adjust some of the sizes and the values to, to make it as close as possible. If you're really inclined, you could put bracing in here if you really wanted to. Um, you know, we can do ladders, so if I go through edit structure, then you can see there we've got the ladder, uh, you know, information there, so whether the, the, ca the cage is going to be there or not, um, and even things like the stairs. Now, the stairs are pretty basic, uh, you just have to draw basically like a trace line to, to indicate the, um, the height and the length of it, and then just adjust all the values to suit. Now, from a plant side, we would export this out to advanced steel. So I'm gonna stick it on my desktop as plant demo. Go save. I'm gonna select objects, so I'm just gonna type in all and go export. So what that is now doing is writing an XML file to my desktop. And once that file is done, I can then basically hand that file over to the advanced steel user. So maybe you're doing the advanced steel side of it as well as the plant. So what the advanced steel person would do is they would create a new drawing and under the export import tab, they would import that file. So now I just look for it and I demo, I bring in that plant demo. And you can see off to the screen there that it's, creating and drawing that exact same model. So you can see there, I don't have to go through uh, and redraw anything. I don't have to redraft anything. We've got all the intelligence there. So if I look at that and look at the advanced properties, it has come through as a 200 UB 18.2, okay? So all of the information comes through. It's on the right system lines. That is a 150 UC 37. Okay, you can even see there that the stairs have come through, the handrail has come through, all of the information has come through. So this is where the advanced steel users, or it might even be a third party company, would start modeling uh, and, and doing their work. So just to show you the one that I've already done, that I've already prepared. So I'm just gonna open up the, the other one that's inside my plant project. So. I've already gone through and modeled in the connections, I've done the footings, I've done some of the bracing, I've even done the stairs, done my my uh, platforms, my handrails, my cage ladders, done everything up here. So, you know, if I drill right down into, uh, let's look at one of the connections. Where are we? So down here, we'll have a look at over here. So you can see here I've got, um, if I double click on the connection box, we've got a fin plate connection here. I can go through and adjust all the plate shapes, the bolts, the horizontal bolts. So if I wanna put in three horizontal bolts, then you can see the connection changes, okay? I can save all of those properties to a library and to a template. If I need to, I can recall those again. Uh, if I look at one of these other ones, in the connection for the seated beam connection. I can go through and adjust 
any of the sections, how many bolts, where the bolts are placed, all the welds, all that kind of information as well. So what happens is the advanced steel guys need to work inside the plant directory folder. So what they would do is save this particular drawing. Uh, I'm going to save it to my desktop. Call it number two. Okay, and then we jump back into Plant 3D and you can see here I've created an advanced steel folder and I would copy that plant structure file into my plant project and then that is where the advanced steel guys would work. So now if I close my plant structure from Plant 3D and I open the advanced steel structure because of object enablers and and you know it being an Autodesk product I can go through and look at the properties of it so I'm inside plant 3d but I can see in advanced steel that it's a straight beam it's a 218.2 um, I haven't given it I've given it assembly numbers so it's item number 1026 and it's part of assembly number 104 okay so from my plant side, so if I jump back into my piping model, instead of looking at my plant structure, I can now unload that and attach my advanced steel structure. Okay, so now I can see properly what is happening with the advanced steel structure and I can work out where I need to place pipe supports, where I need to avoid um, you know, things like bracing or even the, the stairs. So once the stairs are modelled properly, you can see here I've had to model and move that pipe around the stairs so I, I avoid them. And even over here, that valve that I've placed in there now, uh, the operator can walk up to the platform and, and handle that valve as he needs to. So the big benefit of this is as well, is inside Plant 3D is if I wanted to create an ortho drawing, so I'm just going to close that. So now that the advanced steel file is part of the project, I'm just going to create a new ortho, call it ortho 100. So I want to create a new view and I'm going to include my piping model, my advanced steel structure, uh, sorry, my advanced steel structure, not my plant structure and my equipment model uh, and let's say, yeah, okay, that'll do. So maybe I want to zoom in onto a particular area. I can do the whole front view of this. I've got my paper size uh, overlaid over the view so I can see whether it's going to be too big or too small. I don't want to look at the front, I want to look at the top. Uh, and then let's say I want to see, you know, I want to zoom into a particular area. So I want to see sort of within here somewhere. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to see the rest of the structure. I just want to see what's happening around this exchanger. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to see any of that. Let's jump over here somewhere uh, and let's bring that in to over here. Okay, and then I click OK. I place it. So it goes away, does its auto generation, does all the clipping because we obviously have the advanced steel object enablers, the uh, all the information is there. We are going to see the advanced steel uh, entities and, and everything in there. So if I zoom into that, I'll just turn line weights off. 
So you can see there, we can see the nuts, bolts, everything from the advanced steel side. We've got the stairs, we've got the handrails. Uh, if I change my line type scale, you can see things are hidden. So whether the, where there are lines going under, uh, objects that they've shown up as hidden. You can see there we've, we've got the, uh, the cage ladder, we've got the top platform, we've got all the information in there as well. Okay. So from here, if I want to look at a front view, I can just click on adjacent view, select my view, say look at the front, go OK. Uh, I'll place it over, over to the side here somewhere. Because that top view has dictated my front view, I don't need to go through and recreate anything. I just say, yep, just show me the front of that cube. Subsequently, we can do the same the same inside Advanced Steel. We can create our, our drawings. So you can see here, uh, there's our front view of it. There's the, the valve that we've got. So if I want to annotate that, I can pick the valve, right click on it, annotate the hand valve tag. If I don't have a tag on it, um, I can also annotate, let's do uh, the line number for that, for example, uh, full line number call out. So there it is there. So all of that information comes through. Okay. Now on an advanced steel side, just to give you a quick teaser of it, if I open up my plant structure uh, to do the same thing, I can grab a bill of materials. I can do, do drawings of it. So some of these I've already done drawings for. Uh, so let's do... So let's pick uh, a bunch of objects and I'm going to say give me the assemblies. So the selected assemblies, go OK. So it's creating the drawings in the background. I can right click on that column, say show me the assembly detail and there it is there. So if I need to do a little bit of post processing, I can just turn around and move those notes down out of the way. You can see there we've got our dimensions. We, we, there's uh, obviously where the, the fin plates are, what the number, uh, the single part numbers are, and even the, the bill of materials here at the bottom. So the whole assembly is called number 138, and it's made up of, of four different um, uh, sub, uh, sub parts. So one you see two plates and two flats. And it's a combined total weight of about 119 kilos. Okay, so we can go through and do, do all of that with advanced steel as well. Even creating lists. So over here, I can go through and create um, a list of the whole model. And then I can turn around and say, generate me um, a full material list of you know whether I want to do just the bolts, whether I want to do the full material, whether I just want to see saw, uh, saw lists. Um, if I do a full material list of this, then these are all obviously configurable as well. So we've got six pages here. If I go to the last page, we can see that there's uh, 662 items. It's just over seven tons and there's 266 square meters of it. Okay, and then from a plant side to do a bill of materials, I go into my report creator. So the report creator is part of the advanced steel installation. So I just open my project and I say give me a full list of the 3D parts. So it'll go away, read the database, and there it is there. So we've got 32 metres of 8-inch pipe, uh, 34 metres of seamless 8-inch pipe. We've got all the elbows, flanges, reducers, bolts, gaskets, socket well, valves, everything. So that every time you, you know, draw or model something, we can pull that up through the, through the bill of materials. Now, I haven't gone into it, but... Obviously, everything can tie in together inside Navisworks. We can do our clash detection, our timelining, um, and then you know we can, we can use BIM 360 glue uh, to generate um, our glue models, put them up into the cloud, and do a clash detection in the cloud. 
uh, that basically covers the, the demo side of it. Uh, if you want any more information, again, we've got about uh, 10 minutes left, just under 10 minutes. Um, myself and Stefan Gumpert are going to be doing some advanced deal workshops. So if you do want to come to the workshops, where basically what I've shown here, we're going to do it in more detail. We're going to do the workshops live. Um, uh, we're going to show a, a, it's a different demo set. I'm going to create a drawing from from scratch, uh, and then do some structure, do some piping and equipment, and then Stefan Gumpert is going to do the structural side of it. We're going to be networked together. We're going to show how it all works together in a proper. Uh, albeit a demo project, but it's a proper project that we're doing. Um, so there'll be no tricks, uh, it won't be scripted, it won't be pre predefined anything. Um, so you're going to see it live. So if you want to come to those, uh, you can talk to Matt. Uh, that's Matt's email address there on screen plus his mobile number. Uh, I'm going to be in Melbourne next week to present the workshop with Stefan. Then we're going to be in Perth on the 5th of November in Sydney on the 17th and in Auckland on the 19th showing these workshops. Uh, my details are there, so that's my name, uh, what I do, my email address and my mobile number as well. So if you want any more details on this, please uh, feel free to, to touch base with me. Uh, I am on LinkedIn, so just look up my name. And also there's uh, we have a YouTube channel, so if you look under YouTube, look for Autodesk ANZ. Um, we have a bunch of videos on there already, so if I just jump over to that quickly, uh, you will see our Autodesk ANZ website. So there are different videos on there. There's playlists there of, of different things. So things like uh, manufacturing industry, advanced steel videos. We've also got uh, our technology days videos, which there's 31 videos in there showing InfoWorks, Civil, Revit, Format, Dynamo, Advanced Steel Plant, uh, PNID and all of that sort of stuff as well. So um, so yeah, so if you want to touch base with, with any of us, there's our, our contact details. Um, I guess I am going to open it up to any questions, I guess. Um, what I might do is just pop it out. So M. Stewart's asked a question, am I remodeling the plant 3D structure doing substitutions? The AS example looks much different to the imported. So with the the advanced steel model will be different only because it's more detailed. So the, the plant structure, uh, and I'll bring them both up on, on screen. So you can see here my plant structure is fairly basic and it's from a plant side, it's it's just a, a concept or an idea to get um, on you know what what I want to do with a pipe rack. You know, I, I as a piper, I, I figure that I need a pipe rack to be in the northwest and the uh, sorry the east west and the north south direction there, um, and then uh, you know from that I can export using the XML file and then I can bring it into my advanced steel model and detail all the connections. So the reason you might be looking that it might be different is that the advanced steel one is more detailed. So I do have um, the hold down bolts, I do have the fin plate connections, I do have the bracing inside the advanced steel model, um, whereas in the, in the plant 3D model, I don't have those details because I'm more concerned about trying to work out where I'm going to run my pipe and whether I need top of steel in a particular level or a location. Um, so also, yes, so the advanced steel model in plant is non-editable uh, non in plant. Plant doesn't have the functionality to edit the model. So you will have to have either um, you know, someone else on another floor or, you know, somewhere in another part of the building who is running advanced steel and every time they click save, um, the plant users will get a, an XREF notification balloon to say that the model has been updated and they need to reload it. So, um, Mr. Stewart, yes, your, your model will need to be edited and modified in advanced steel. Uh, and then subsequently, obviously, the advanced steel guys can see the plant model, but they can't edit or modify because they don't have plant functionality. So um, it is two different pieces of software for two different um, disciplines, um, but, but sitting on AutoCAD and, and again, being Autodesk products, they, they can just uh, XREF one another back and forth. Uh, 
when the AS file is updated, do you simply overwrite the existing AS file? It's in, no. So what you have is the advanced steel users are working in the advanced steel file inside the plant project. So all they need to do, they don't need to, to overwrite anything. So you would tell the advanced steel guys, and I'm just showing you my screen now. So they now work under the plant structure, and that's the file that they keep editing. So there's no overriding of files. They just um, look at that directory structure. So you let Plant3D control um, the structure. If the engineer is off-site, then yes, you will have to, to turn around and, and say, um, uh, you know, copy the file uh, back and override it every time. But obviously you have to keep in mind any changes that are done in the office and if they're done off-site, you're going to have two different files. So um, whether you set it up that people in the office have read-only access to that file uh, and then, then have an administrator control that file every time, otherwise you're going to end up with double ups. Uh, does a plant 3D project with steel models display well in Navisworks? Yes, it does. Advanced steel object enablers are needed. Uh, if you have it installed, they're already there. There are advanced steel object enablers you can download. Um, otherwise, with the advanced steel models, they're a DWIF file. So they, they come in um, into Navisworks and all the properties are in there as well. So they do, and also the, the, the clash. Uh, I'll even see if I've even got one. I think I've got a, a Navisworks file. I do. Um, so Clash works, uh, everything works, Timeliner works, everything everything works between the two. So I'll just load up this, this Navisworks file. I think it should be uh, fine. Uh, and then we'll be able to see. <clears throat> should be able to see everything that comes through. If not, I can load all the models up. Uh, Richard Hardman, is Advanced Steel included in the plant design suite? No, it's not. So Advanced Steel is a separate product. Um, there is, uh, sorry, you can just see there that we have the Advanced Steel model um, combined with our plant 3D model. So I've gone through and generated colors for all of these. So you can see here, there's my, my nuts and bolts for the advanced steel combined with my plant 3D model sitting here in the background. Okay, so we can go through and do clash. Uh, advanced steel, no, it's, it's not in, in the plant design suite. So if you wanted to have plant 3D and advanced steel together, you will have to buy them as, as two separate products. Okay. Is there any more questions before we, we close off the webinar? Um, again, I'll just leave my contact details up there. Um, this will, webinar will be uploaded to uh, the Autodesk website, so you will be able to recall all of this anyway. Um, and again, if you, if you want to come to the workshops, the workshops will be, a, uh, I think, about an hour and a half, two hours long. Um, and there are the dates there. So like I said, myself and Stefan Gumpert will be doing this basically live. So there'll be no, um, no trickery going on. Oh, and Stefan's just reminded me there is a promo for advanced steel and plant out at the moment. You're best off, uh, I guess, talking to your reseller. Uh, and then there's obviously desktop subscription for either of them as well. All right, well, thank you very much to everyone for, for joining. Uh, like I said, just touch base with me if you want any more information. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you at the workshops. Thank you.